Hi, welcome to another video of the Hong Kong Sports Science YouTube channel. And today we're going to be talking about a very common injury for a lot of runners and, and mainly trail runners is a rolled ankle, is a sprayed ankle. Yep. You know, we've I've been I've been there and it's not a fun situation to be in. You know, my mistake was that I tried to get back into running quicker before quick quicker than what I should have. And, and you know that kind of affected my recovery. So you know, talking a lot about it with Joe, we kind of decided that we're going to give you an insight of how you should deal with with, with a rolled ankle. Yeah. So we'll go back to the beginning. You're running. You're a bit unlucky. You twisted your ankle. Yeah. You should definitely stop. So that's the first thing. Yeah. You, yeah. You stop straight away. Yeah. Um, so maybe we'll just quickly sh show people what a what a sprain or explain what a, a sprained ankle sure, is. Sure. So basically, usually, guys, you're gonna you're gonna do one of two ways. One is 90% of the time, so that would be over like that. So that's going to tear the ligaments on the on the outside of the ankle. Um, you've got you've got three different ligaments. Um, it's usually one of the front ones, um, and there's three different grades. So one and two are less severe, one least obviously. Um, grade three is a total tear, so you've torn the whole ligament off. That's um, going to take a lot longer to heal. It's going to be a lot more. It's going to actually be less painful, but probably a more of a difficult recovery. Um, the other one, which is very unlikely, but more likely with trail runners because of the uneven terrain, which we go over inwards. Now that one's quite a, that, that's a very strong ligament, so if that does tear, then it's going to be a pretty tough recovery, but also you should really go and talk to someone um, about how you should best manage that. Um, on, the, on the topic of talking to someone, the other thing we need to mention for that is that um, you need to be conscious that it is actually a, it is actually a sprained ankle. Um, and it's not a broken bone because quite often with these things you can get a, a, a fracture where the ligament pulls the bone off um, could just be a straight fracture just from the force so if you have tenderness on this bone on the outside your ankle bone the right at the tip or even on that somewhere um, like sore to press also here on the inside ankle bone or you can't wait there for four steps so you can't take weight through your foot for four steps then you need there's a it's called the Ottawa ankle rules so doctors and physios, we all know that, and we all know these rules, we should do anyway. Um, if that's the case, then we need to send you for an x-ray and we need to rule out fracture, because that's the main thing. Because if you miss a fracture, recovery is going to be very slow and maybe not full. Um, okay, so, so we rolled our ankle. Yeah, so we stopped decided, running. it's a rolled ankle, yeah. Yeah, usually by the time you get home, that ankle is really going to swell up. Yeah. So, so we want to ice it? Yeah, so... Um, Everyone would know, right? And yeah. You brought that up with me, but so yeah. So we're gonna. I would be relative rest. We're gonna come back to that. So um, ice, yes. So you want to ice every two two hours, twenty minutes initial, uh, twenty hours, tw twenty, 20 minutes. minutes for two hours um, initially. Um, so every two hours, twenty minutes. Yeah, ice. and you don't have to do more than twenty. It's actually a waste of time if you do more than twenty. Your body won't. It won't do anything to the to the swelling. Your body won't adapt anymore after that. So twenty minutes. This is the science behind it now. Um, so, and then we want to compress it. We want to compress it and elevate it. Yeah, and elevate it. Very to simple. Get some blood flow in it, yeah. basically. Um, with the icing, one thing, it might sound crazy, but you really want to ice around the outside here. So, where you would have torn the ligament, right? A lot of people just put it on the front, put it on the back. Really need to get ice here. So, that sounds really obvious, but a lot of people don't do that. Um, yeah, so, so let's go back to relative rest. So, relative rest is really important. Um, <laughs> Vlad says a lot of these guys, they get, tend to, when they do things, they just stop and sit on the couch. Yeah, yeah. so some of them were kind of like, you know, rolled my ankle, okay, well that's six socks, six weeks of not doing any exercise, just yeah. sitting on the couch. Now, from a, from my point of view, you want to be able to do as much as you can without pain, yeah. or with minimal pain. So that, to start with, that might just mean ankle pumps. Um, so you literally even, kind of even standing up. Yeah. And move yeah, that's ankle. a really good way of doing it. Yeah, kind holding of, a wall if you need to. Yeah, yeah. hold on to something, work yeah. on the other, uh, the balance of your other foot, and yeah. kind of move that up. Maybe like circles. Maybe try and write your name. Yeah, you know whatever you want to do, just to get that movement back within yeah. your pain. Okay, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be sharp pain. It might be a bit of, a little bit uncomfortable, but it shouldn't be painful. Yeah, a little bit of pain is, is okay. Like yeah, comfortable pain. Yeah, right. comfortable pain is fine. And the reason we want to do that is we want to stop any any um, number one. You want to help the ligament heal in its correct. Position, so yeah. you want to help you, by stimulating the ligament. Um, you're going to help with the laying down of the collagen, which is what ligaments are made out of. Okay. Um, but also, you want to stop any sort of uh, imbalances or any compensatory stuff within the foot um, to happen. Because if you don't move your foot, all the, all the muscles, uh, all the muscles, but mainly the joints in the foot will become really stiff. Okay. And then, so that's where you see a lot of people kind of sprain their ankle six months ago. 
yeah. you know, they're kind of back running, yeah. but it looks really swollen and big. Yeah, and so it's still swelling up despite being healed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. And quite often, I mean, and uh, like I was saying earlier, that's when people will come and see me and they say, oh, it should be healed. And uh, that's what people I make money from is basically people will come in, their ankles, they've rested it, they haven't done anything else but rest, they've gone back to running, it's still swelling up. Yeah. It's because the little bones within the foot, so all through here, the midfoot, and even in the ankle joint, um, it's called the talocrural joint, and also and also the subtalar joint, so underneath the heel bone, get really, really stiff. Uh, because you haven't, you've, you've changed your mechanics, you haven't moved it, um, you haven't walked properly, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, so those, those joints become really stiff, and then when you run, they rub against them, they don't get the fluid movement, it creates swelling. Um, and you never really, without a physio, or you know, someone like a physio, you're never really going to get that back. Unless um, you do your own research and find this video online, that might help you. Then you, you can well. avoid it. Yeah. yeah, you can avoid that. So um, it's really easy. Exactly. So the other thing that's really important in the early stages under relative rest will be how you walk. So let's say it's really severe and you, are, you can't put much weight through it. You probably would have crutches. It might be smart for the yep. first few days, maybe a week to have some crutches. Um, but if you don't and you don't feel like you need them, which a lot of people don't actually, they find it a bit of a burden, um, they just limp around. So maybe you can just demonstrate how you <laughs> might limp around like. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, or on their toes. Yeah, or yeah, they're kind of you know that step would look a bit weird. Yeah. Not to put any pressure on that heel usually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And just to, yeah, exactly. Pretty much yeah, on the on the ankle and the heel. Yeah, yeah. They, so they kind of go a bit more on their toes, front foot so, when they're walking, and they kind of you yeah. know not to put any pressure on that heel. Yeah. And so what I would recommend is that you actually um, you try and walk as normal as possible, even if it's smaller it's and slower, a little bit yeah, more. Yeah. You, you know, you're a bit scared of hurting the ankle. You're not probably not going to hurt it. Actually, going to help it. So it might be normal heel toe walking. Yeah, yeah. kind of very yeah. simple. Yeah, concentrating on that, you know, kind of placing yeah. the heel and then the toe, kind of yeah. basic walking. And I would actually do that not only around town but also as an exercise. Yeah, yeah. so you say, okay, five minutes. I'm going to walk around the house with good technique. Barefoot. So that'd be yeah, barefoot, hundred percent yeah. barefoot. So that'd be my two exercises early on. Yeah, I'd be looking so at kind of moving that. Yeah. And yeah, and, and, and then rotation, walking, yeah, and, and, walking. Rotation. and then maybe also some weight shifting. So just very basic. So oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So you, you start with your weight on your right side, and then you just take your weight onto your left side, getting used to taking some weight through it, because we're going to eventually be working towards working towards balancing. So initially, you probably wouldn't take all your weight through it. You wouldn't want to. It would be painful. Just give it. Don't do it if it's painful. Yeah. So you can hold on to something and kind yeah. of yeah. give it a bit of weight. Yeah. And but, then after that, we go into some of the yeah. stuff that we already talked about. Yeah. So as you feel, yeah, exactly. So as you feel more comfortable. Um, you're walking fairly normally, um, you, oh, you pretty much can start to take some weight through it. Key point is that you start doing balance work and proprioception, right? Because yeah. the, the reason that we, we, we need to do that is something in, in physio land, there's something called difficult ankles and you, know, you do a whole topic on it at university. And um, basically what it, the reason why ankles are, it's a difficult ankle is people tend to do it over and over again. So they do it once yeah, and it yeah. keeps happening. And the reason is, you've torn, when you tear the ligaments, you also tear the little sensory receptors, which are also in the ligaments. Um, so the sensory receptors get torn, um, people don't do their rehab and balance, and then they no longer have very good awareness of where their foot is. So when they're running down trails and stuff, they actually don't have that ability to correct very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they tend to go over much more easily. So it happens over and over again. Um, so this so is I'm really, sure a lot really of people, important. sorry, a lot of people that are watching this, probably sprain <laughs> their ankle a few times. Yeah. So you've got to make sure that, you know, if it happens once, you're actually trying to heal correctly and then rehab correctly, which means doing a lot of balance work. Yeah. So that brain starts working with that ankle again. Yeah, so what you should look at is our balance videos again. Yeah. Um, look at the balance videos. Um, again, if you can't take weight through it, it's a bit too early, but when you can start taking weight through it comfortably, start with the, the really basic balance exercises and work your way up. Um, the other things you might want to start doing at that point would be making sure you keep in range of motion. So really easy sort of knee to wall. So you've got your head wall here, you're pushing your knee in, just to make sure that, particularly with this, this uh, ligament on the outside here, you lose that ability to pull your toes towards you like that quite, quite frequently. So you know, pushing your knee to wall, trying to maintain that, doing those mobility things is yeah. quite good. And also downward dogs to, or something like that to, to, to get that motion back. The, the other way, yeah, and, yeah, and also the pointing of the toes. And even the simple things like sitting on your heels, like, yeah. you know, Maybe you can just demonstrate that. Yeah, kind of. Well, so again, this is when you when you feel comfortable. You can start this as soon as it feels comfortable. So just sitting like that, you can start leaning back yeah. to get a bit more from the shin. Yeah, you can even lift your yeah. knees a tiny bit. So that'll exactly. Um, it, what, what another good one is actually tucking your toes yeah. in and sitting back as well. Yeah, you know to kind of bring that um, that ankle working again. 
Yeah, and you know, to finish off, we, we've got to say that once you start running again, if you're a trail runner, yeah. don't just jump on the trail straight away. Yeah, do that. Give yourself some time on the road, you know, a road kind of running yeah. is a bit nicer on the ankles in a way because it's, you know, it's not technical. The way, the way I look at returning to running is it should be rehabilitation running. So you, even though you're not ready to run trails or run long distances, you know, if it's, you know, you're four weeks and you're feeling pretty good walking around, you're four weeks on, from injury, you might go for a five minute run on the road. Um, and nice then, and easy, you know, just getting, yeah, building up again. I yeah. think a lot of people think, well, I rolled my ankle, I should still be doing, you know, 100k in a, a week. No, don't look at it as training, look at it as yeah. rehab, especially with like week four, week five, looking at it as rehab. Um, if it blows up, gets very really swollen, you've done too much, yeah. next time you do less. Um, if it does swell up, you probably haven't done yourself any damage, to be honest. Unless you've rolled it again, you probably haven't done yourself any damage. Um, when you're returning to running, uh, you might, you know, you might consider like having a, like a compression, a yeah. compression sock around it, or even like a very, a very uh, light uh, ankle brace. Um, not something that restricts your movement, but just something that gives you a bit of a reminder, um, a bit more appropriate, a bit, a bit more sensory input um, into that joint. Um, so that when you if you do go over it, it gives you that quicker reminder, yeah. quicker reminder to not go over your ankle. So something with those ankle braces that you see a lot of tennis players wear them and a lot of yeah. athletes and basketball players and stuff, you know, it's, it's important to remember that, you know, kind of once you start relying on that ankle brace. Yeah, you want to get out of that. Yeah, so that's right. So a lot of people kind of rely on it and they then kind of use it for the next 10 years and the ankle doesn't really get stronger. Yeah. So if you are on if, if you on a you know, use it because you're a bit scared of doing it again. Yeah. Use it, but make sure that you don't use it all the time yeah. and you work away from it. So what I mean working away from it is maybe like, you know, five weeks after the injury, you have it for, you know, every single run this week. Yeah. And then, you know, a week later, you just have it for four runs this week. And yeah. then a week later for three runs this week till you actually like, you know, after, after a few months, you know, get all completely away from it. Yeah. The ankle should be stronger by then. And the other thing you want to do in terms of your exercise rehab is not just the balance stuff. You want to take it to... Do you want to take your ankle, make your ankle better than it was before? So you want to be doing really high end exercises. So again, single leg squats, single leg deadlifts, calf raises, calf raises. Everything on one leg is really important because running is on one leg and it's really really functional if you're doing that. Um, even up on you know, if you look at our videos on the level three single leg squats and level three um, deadlifts, um, it's up on the forefoot um, and that's really good for ankle control. Um, and also, you could be looking at things like bosu balls, wobble, uh, bosu balls, wobble boards. You know, doing your balance exercises yeah. on that, and then you're probably okay. If you can do all that stuff pretty well, you, you can just forget about it and yeah. just do your normal rehab, um, normal strengthening, uh, normal whatever you're doing as a as a other than running, and then just get back to running. If you have any better ideas to kind of, if you had a special way of recovering from an, an ankle injury, yeah. you might, you know, you can share it with us. So other people can see it, and maybe we can talk about it in in, in one of our videos. Um, otherwise, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to add, you know, something you like, you don't like, you know, write it below, we'll try and answer it. So, so we're, we're just, just to finish up, the key points I think would be relative rest, um, walking without a limp if you can, um, trying to slowly build up to running, um, and doing your balance exercises, um, and icing early days. So icing for the first, you know, three days is really, really important. Um, apart from that, you know, there's lots of recipes, but this is a pretty good one. I think. Yeah, I mean, if you follow this, I uh, promise you that you'll get back running sooner and healthier than before. Yeah. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.